Hello, I'm Melody. Welcome to Myanmar Today Review. And this is where we visit the top stories for this week from Myanmar Today. Here are the reports from our reporters from this week. Loom will give us the report on Bidang Zuloto discusses to receive ADB loan. David Tanner got the report on Myanmar Unicode migration campaign. Aka Jo will be giving us a look at two Myanmar teams to join Mekong Business Contest of 2020. Dota Suizin will have the full stories on International Literacy Day. Aka Jo will report on the Expo on Myanmar's processing and packaging still underdeveloped. Before we get to the reports, let's take a look at the featured local news from this week. State Councillor and Union Minister for Foreign Affairs Do Aung San Suu Kyi hosted a farewell lunch for Ambassador of Brunei Jerusalem to Myanmar and Dean of the Diplomatic Corp, who is leaving Myanmar after completion of his tour of duty and spouse at the residence in Nebido on Wednesday. Also present at the lunch were Union Minister for International Cooperation U Jotin and spouse. For the sustainable development for Myanmar sugar industry, Myanmar Sugar Forum 2019 was held in Nebido on Wednesday. Vice President U Henry Ventiu, Union Minister for Agriculture, Livestock and Irrigation Dr. Aldu, departmental officials and personnel from the related fields attended the forum. At the forum, the vice president stressed to expand sugarcane cultivation to support the needs of local foodstuff industry, producing high-quality and value-added sugar products, and seeking markets for export through the trade agreement. He also called for providing support to develop sugarcane cultivation for the socio-economic life of the growers. Now let's move on to the last local news for today. According to the Information and Public Relations Department, schools have been closed in Minla Township, Bago region because of flooding triggered by torrential rains on Thursday. A total of 27 schools have been closed temporarily in a township and a timetable will be set for more classes when the water recedes. And that's all we have with the local news. This is Myanmar Today Review broadcasting from Myanmar International Radio. You can visit our website at mrradio.com.mm. You can also listen to our radio programs live on the website. If you're on FM, make sure you catch us on 96.1 FM in Yangon, 96.5 in Mandalay, and 96.7 in Nipido. You can also download MR Radio app on both iOS and Android devices for your own convenience. And I believe it's time now for our first report. On Monday, September 9th, the second time Bidang Zuloto 13th regular session, 22nd day, took place in Nebido. Following at the session, Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock and Irrigation and Ministry of Planning and Finance presented to the Bidang Zuloto about receiving ADB loan for Resilient Community Development Project in Myanmar. For more details, let's check out with Loom. The second time Bidong Sulut Do 13 regular session, 22nd day, took place in Nebido on Monday, 9 September 2019. Following the session, representatives of Bidong Sulut Do discussed to carry out resilient community development project with Asia Development Bank ADB Loan. Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock and Irrigation discussed at the Bitang Sulodo to receive the total of low 185 million US dollar for implementing the development work in Chin State, Sagai Region, the Nindai Region and Eawadi Region. Regarding to this issue, representatives of different ministries presented their ideas to Bitang Sulodo on Monday. Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock and Irrigation explained the idea behind why and how the resilient community development project has become. <laughs> 
লুথু ফুমফু ইয়ে সি মাং আকাউন্টে পোসং আশা ফুমফু ইয়ে বা এশিয়ান ডেভেলপমেন্ট ব্যাংক এ ডি বি তাম আমেরিকান ডলা তেয়া সেসঙ্গা দা সেইয়ু কে জানে চালেন বি সাইবিউয়ে মহিমুয়ে নে সৈম্যা উনজি থানা সেন তিনটা ফে বারে না গাই খেয়া Myanmar is listed in the countries that can face natural disaster most, according to 2017 Global Climate Risk Index. The people living in the natural disaster zone, people working in the fields who are most likely to face natural disaster, and people with limited knowledge of natural disaster prevention are those people who have suffered losses from natural disasters. In consequence, the poverty is occurred. Thus, for sustainable development and poverty reduction, we have to carry out the prevention and reduction of natural disaster at the same time. Based on that fact, Resilient Community Development Project, RCDP, is initiated. <laughs> Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock and Irrigation further explain the main objectives of working for Resilient Community Development Project. The main objectives of carrying out Resilient Community Development Project are the people themselves are working for the community development and increasing rural income supporting higher living standard, responding quick response to natural disasters. So to be able to carry out the project, Asian Development Bank, together with Department of Rural Development, did preliminary survey in 2018 and drew the project design. Due to its project design, 244.95 million US dollars is needed, and it is aimed the project period will be seven years from 2019 and 2020 fiscal year to 2025 and 2026 fiscal years. Following the session, the Deputy Minister of Ministry of Planning and Finance, Uma Mawin, also engaged the session by explaining the rule and regulations of taking the law from Asia Development Bank. The rules and regulations of obtaining the loan from ADB are that the loan has a maturity of 32 years. We do not have to pay very much interest within the first 8 years. It will be just 1% during that period, and the interest rate will increase to 1.5% during the next 24 years, which means we could receive 47.2% grant. This means the low end is reasonable. That's the report on Pirazu Loto discusses to receive ADB loan. The event for Myanmar Unicode Migration Campaign has been organized by Myanmar Computer Federation on September 8 at Myanmar ICT Parks Conference Hall. The event purpose is to share latest updates, progresses, and information regarding for Unicode migration to the artists in movies, music, and Japan industries. Our reporter David Tanner got the details of it. Unicode is computing industry standard for the consistent encoding, representation, and handling of text expressed in most of the world's writing system. The standard is maintained by the Unicode Consortium, and as of May 2019, the most recent version, Unicode 12.1, is also the standard for Myanmar Found System as well. With that being said, Let's hear out from the chairman of Myanmar Commuter Federation, MCF, Ume Ziyalai, for the detail of the event. As the day for official nationwide migration for Unicode Standard Font, which will be on October 1st, it's very soon as of now. So we have been preparing a lot of services and giving awareness to the public as much as we can. 
So we have also talked with most of the service centers across the country to help changing fund system in each of the respective area. Moreover, we have also collaborated with most of the influencers, celebrities to reach more to the public through their followers. For this event, we'll be meeting with artists from movies, music, and the bin industry to explain the industry for how Unicode is important and how we should work as a team to make a real change. What kind of preparations has already been made for majorities of the people who are not used to technologies and services, and how much progressions has been made will also be answered. It is an easy task for the people who are into technology and stuff. But the thing is that there are more people in Myanmar that who are not into technologies yet. That is why we are setting priorities for those people. And also, manufacturers are really important. They have to make the Unico font default in every phone they manufacture. But for this event, we have contacted each of the manufacturers to help out the people who came to the event today in each of its small boat area. In this event, we will also be hearing out a speech from the Union Minister for Transport and Communications, Wu Tan Zimao, as well. Is it not possible to just use the phone that we are more used to at the present time? Well, the answer is, for our country to improve, we have to make sure quickly use the e-government system. But think about it. If we were to use e-government system, we will be mostly using social media, websites, and other online services between each other. For all of our ethnic groups in Myanmar to be united, we have to, of course, use a standardized font system only. Unicode plays a big part where it can process all or majority of our country's ethnic group languages. We will also be hearing out from Vice Chairman of MCF, Uturn Turata, for his perspective in fully migrating Unicode as well. Let's find out. T while migrating to Unicode, we have to change 100% because it's about changing together and accessible between each other with no delay. Those are also the reason for why we had taken more than 20 years to migrate to Unicode. In summary, Unicode it's not just about our country's standard, but the international country standard. If we won't change, we will be lagging behind. Even now, we are lagging eight years with the last country which have migrated to Unicode. So we have no option but to work this out together as soon as possible before even the official day, October 1st, come. Reporter David Tanner reporting from Myanmar International Radio, signing out for now. That's the report on Myanmar Unicode Migration Campaign. Two winning entrepreneur teams from Myanmar Business Model Competition will join the Mekong Business Challenge of 2020. Myanmar will be hosting the Mekong Business Challenge in 2020 early on. For more on the winning team's business models and the Mekong Business Challenge, our reporter Aga Jo has more. Two winning teams from Myanmar Business Model Competition are reported to join the Mekong Business Challenge 2020. These are two of the winning teams at Myanmar Business Model Competition 2019. The winning teams were announced at the prize awarding ceremony of Myanmar Business Model Competition on Sunday. 
Myanmar's UMFCCI and Japan's CIESF brought the contest to Myanmar's young entrepreneurs. Dr. Miltat, vice chairperson of UMFCCI, explained. First prize, second prize. This model business contest has been around since 2011, and this event was the one held jointly. The main objective of holding this contest is to inspire and breed systematically a new generation of young energetic entrepreneurs and new businesses. 76 teams participated for this year contest. We chose the 14 teams as the first selection. Then in second selection, we chose 8 teams. Now we chose top teams, winner gets gold medal. 5 million chats for the first prize, 2.5 million for the second prize, and 12 lakhs for the third prize and consolation prizes. The eight teams that reached the final selection stage include Myanmar Games, Myanmar Signature, Green Environment, Akaya, Bagantrade.com, My Lawyer Application, Yangon Wheels, and Capsule 360. Among these eight teams, Myanmar Games and Bagantrade.com are going for the Mekong Business Contest. UMFCCI's vice chair continued to explain about Mekong Business Contest. Under the arrangement of UMFCCI, DG Matrix, the winner for champion trophy and gold medalist and MM tutors, the first runner and silver medalist of last year's 2018 contest compete in the Mekong Business Challenge 2019 in Cambodia representing Myanmar. MM tutors outperform and outshine all other competitors from Mekong countries plus Bhutan at Mekong Challenges 2019 to win gold medal and champions events to compete in the International Business Model Competition 2019 in USA. They managed to advance to the semi-finals, winning the third place in this international competition. It is noted that Myanmar will host the Mekong Business Contest in early 2020. Also, as a host country, Myanmar will be able to include one additional team to join the contest. Among the two teams going for Mekong Business Contest 2020, this is the entrepreneur of Bagantrade.com. Our business model is Bagantrade.com. Our technology is designed to help solve the traditional trade issue happening at border areas. The motive behind developing the platform is that there are many challenges that traders in border areas face and some face fraud. So the intention to help with this leads to developing this platform. Myanmar currently is in its triple transition of peace, politics and economics. The transition and reforms and the economic sector and its successful implementation is extremely important for the country. Myanmar today is considered as the country with the fastest growing economy in the region. But it's facing an acute shortage of competent skilled entrepreneurs and workforce to meet the demands of the new economic scenario. It is noted that business contests such as Myanmar Business Model Competition will greatly contribute to the creation, the development, and the capacity building of a new economy. This is Agajo reporting for Myanmar International Radio. That's the report on two Myanmar teams to join Mekong Business Contest of 2020. This is Myanmar Today Review, broadcasting from Myanmar International Radio. You can visit our website at mrradio.com.mm. You can also listen to our radio programs live on the website. If you're on FM, make sure you catch us on 96.1 FM in Yangon, 96.5 in Mandalay, and 96.7 in Nibida. You can also download the MI Radio app on both iOS and Android devices for your own convenience. With the regard of giving awareness of the importance of literacy, International Literacy Day is held annually on 8th of September. The Literacy and Regional Development Service Association also celebrated the International Literacy Day of 2019.
Starting from 1966, International Literacy Day has been being celebrated worldwide annually on 8 September. It is to give the awareness of the importance of literacy for individuals as well as communities. In Myanmar, which has been through different periods, the literacy rate had dropped in colonial period. <laughs> Starting from the post-war era, the governments of all time have activated the literacy campaign, especially starting from 1964. There was a huge public campaign participated by all citizens. As a result, over 2 million citizens of that time became literate. To commemorate this event, we have been holding the International Literacy Day annually. Generally, until 1984, over 2.5 million people out of illiterate people turned to be literate. Then, because of many situations, the literacy campaign has stopped. However, it was operated again in 2013. Later, the primary schools were opened in the rural areas and the number of literate people under 50 years has increased. According to the database, over 92% of Myanmar citizens are literate, and we are working towards for the literacy of the rest 8%. <laughs> When we planned the 1964 campaign of literacy, the committee to produce the adult textbook under the lead of Seya Mintuwin was founded. Being a professional linguist, Seya Mintuwin invented the teaching method of Watakalata to be easier learning for the adult. This teaching method is still being used till the present time. Since 2014, the Literacy and Regional Development Service Association was founded with the volunteers of literacy activists from different universities and colleges. It is glad to see that the active participants of the public campaign which has started in 55 years ago, gather under the Literacy and Regional Development Service Association. It is the great gathering of fulfilling the educational, health and social needs of the people from the rural areas. <laughs> In the rural areas, which are too far away from the city, we provide the teaching for the quality education as well as to achieve the higher exam pass rate. We open the libraries and donated the books for schools and libraries. We have held literature talks for the awareness of morality, drug quitting, and knowledge sharing. Moreover, we have provided domestic courses. Wisdom can make the country develop, so the students should not waste their time by using phones and they should read more. Besides from school education, we also should seek for general knowledge. In the developing age of the country, there is increasing rate of literacy. However, it is also crucial to have access of quality education as well as outside school education. That's all for now. This is Dora Suisen from MI Radio. That's the report on International Literacy Day. To improve the processing and packaging industry in Myanmar, the 6th International Processing and Packaging Exhibition kicked off at Myanmar Expo Hall in Yangon on Thursday. The exhibition features 200 brands from more than 20 countries aiming to elevate the growing food and beverage industry.
For more on the Myanmar's processing and packaging industry and the experts' insights, Aka Jo has more. Experts comment that processing and packaging industries in Myanmar is still undeveloped compared to its Asian counterparts. To improve the processing and packaging in Myanmar, the 6th International Processing and Packaging Exhibition kicked off at Myanmar Expo Hall in Yangon on Thursday. The exhibition features 200 brands from more than 20 countries aiming to elevate the growing food and beverage industry of the country. Going from strength to strength every year, ProPack Myanmar intends to deliver the highest quality and quantity trade buyers, the greatest number and selection of international suppliers, and the showcase of latest technology and innovations. Don Yen Yen A, organizer of the exhibition, explained. <laughs> In terms of processing and packaging, Myanmar is far behind its counterparts and it urgently needs to catch up with them. What we should do is that some of the products of Myanmar, for a good example, it's coffee. If we can properly do packaging to the Myanmar coffee, it can be exported to the countries in the region. Another one is the tea leaves and it can also be exported to other countries. So, if we can properly pack them, we can add value to the food products of Myanmar. And this is the main objective behind this exhibition. The exhibition showcases fully automated machines for SME and large enterprise. So, the visitors will witness the machines and advanced technology. About 150 exhibitors from 20 countries join the exhibition. It's more than 200 brands. Myanmar Food Processors and Exporters Association, Myanmar Industries Association, Food Science and Technology Association of Myanmar, and Myanmar Retailer Association provide the official support. Do Win Win Ji, Chairperson of Food Science and Technology Association of Myanmar, commented. Although the primary product like fruit and vegetable does not need packaging, the secondary produce the processed food need proper packaging, which product need what kind of packaging and stuff. Those are quite advanced in other country. As the supply chain have grown bigger all over the world, the importance of packaging have become bigger. You cannot just pick it with the plastics. We need the advanced technology for the packaging. So the exhibition will show you what soft or food product goes with what kind of Packaging. The visitor will also get to learn from conference and seminar from expert. The survey conducted by exhibition shows that about 72% of the visitors expect to increase their investment over the next 12 months, with 22% continuing with the same level of investment. About 66% of visitors indicated they were visiting the show to buy products and 70% to find new suppliers, and about 3,700 trade visitors came to join the exhibition, and the exhibition ran from 12th to 14th of September. Among the exhibitors, Seya Bio, the local organic products manufacturer, gave his comment. I am showcasing the award-winning organic products at the exhibition. Directorate of Industrial Supervision on Inspection invited the SMEs like us to showcase our products at the exhibition. The five organic products I exhibit here include organic shampoo, organic soup, mosquito repellent and so on. This is such a rare and good opportunity for us as the international trade visitors will come and witness the development of the SMEs in Myanmar. And we expect to expand our business with the potential investors. The exhibition claims to be the best platform to connect the country's rapidly expanding processing and packaging industries. Going from strength to strength every year, ProPack Myanmar has a proven track record of delivering the highest quality and quantity trade buyers. 
greatest number and selection of international suppliers and the best showcase of the latest technology and innovations. As industry continues to expand across Myanmar due to growing consumer demand, new trends, strong growth and increase in exports, ProPEC Myanmar is the must-attend annual meeting place for the industry. This is Agajo reporting from Myanmar International Radio. That's the report on Myanmar's processing and packaging still underdeveloped. That's all with the news and reports on Myanmar Today Review. Catch Myanmar Today on MITV every Monday to Friday at 8.30 p.m. And make sure you tune in every Saturday on MITV at 8.30 p.m. for Myanmar Today Review. Until next time.